Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you five things you may have missed when you're using your Olympus camera. And these are features that are very easy to overlook because they're not generally available on every camera. Really, they're just on our OMDs. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. Now I'll be using my EM5 Mark II as my base camera, but the settings I'm going to show you today are going to be similar across all of the Olympus cameras. Now the first one I'm going to show you are the press and hold buttons. And I have a whole video on all of the press and hold buttons. If It's uh, episode number 288 that you can watch to see additional uh, functions you can do by pressing and holding different buttons. But today I'm going to show you the two that I use the most. So the first one is actually the function 2 button. Now by default you might think this is just for highlight shadow. Because if I push it and you look, the highlight shadow menu comes up and you can rotate the front and rear dials to adjust the highlight shadow. However, if I press and hold the Function 2 button and rotate the rear dial at the same time, I will see additional functionality. So I'm going to press and hold it, and you can see nothing's happening until I rotate the rear dial. And let's say I want to make it uh, magnify instead. So now when I push and hold or press the Function, uh, function 2 button, it now becomes the magnify button. So let's point this over here at my prop. And we'll just do a quick focus. Now, if I touch the uh, or push the uh, function 2 button, you'll see the little magnify box come up. And I want to magnify on the flowers there. And if I push it again, you can see it is now magnifying. And then I can rotate the rear dial and control the magnification level. And then I just push the OK button to kind of snap out of it. Now the other press and hold button that I use a lot is actually the OK button. As you know, when we click the OK button, the super control panel comes up. But when you press and hold the OK button, it will do other things. And the one that I use the most is actually in my autofocusing uh, focus point. So let me show you what I mean. Now when we press the OK button, our super control panel comes up. And right now I'm in the single point autofocus. So I can click OK again, and I can move the focus point around like so and take my picture and I move this focus point around a lot sometimes you know I use my finger which doesn't have quite the same precision as it used to but if I want to go back to the center focus all I have to do is press and hold the OK button and you can see it snaps right back to the center so no matter where I move this to if I press and hold it'll go right back to the center point now the next thing I want to show you is actually in the live view so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to toggle through the different live view settings until I see my histogram down here at the bottom. All right, so looking at the flowers here, you will notice that the histogram is showing the exposure across the entire frame. But there's a little bit of a green area uh, at the bottom. And what that's actually is, it's another histogram, but it's only reflecting the center spot. So it's like a spot meter histogram. Because notice when I move my center spot up to the brightest area of the frame, you'll see how the green area has all moved over to the right. And if I go to a darker area in the frame, you'll see that the uh, green area has moved all the way to the left. And it's picking a little bit of that white uh, petal on the other flower as I move over. And then as I move back, you can see how the histogram has moved mostly to the left side to reflect that dark area. And then behind the flowers here, I have a neutral blue color. And you'll see how it spikes nicely to the center, showing me I have sort of a neutral uh, exposure here in the blue area. Now, another thing you might notice is that on the far right, you will see some red lines sometimes. And then on the far left, sometimes you'll see a blue line. And that's telling you that something in the exposure has clipped. So let me just overexpose this scene. And you'll see that that red line sort of pops right up, doesn't it? The green is now also overexposed. But see the red line? That's telling me that a lot of the uh, pixels have been clipped. And then when I underexpose, and it's really hard to see on here, but there's a blue line now over on the left side telling me that some of the pixels or a lot of the pixels have now been clipped. Now the next thing I'm going to show you actually affects the colors of your images sometimes. 
uh, and it's something in your white balance. So if you're using auto white balance, uh, you need to check this setting to see if this is what's causing your colors to look a little bit off. So it's something called keep warm colors and you can turn that on or off and it's especially sensitive to any kind of warm lighting, this yellow lighting like tungsten lighting or any warm colored LEDs or fluorescence, whatever is casting a very warm light uh, that's low in the Kelvin scale is going to try and retain some of those in the image. But you can turn that off. It is on by default. All right, to change this setting, just go into the menu, go into your custom menu, go down to uh, G, click OK, and scroll down here to white balance auto keep warm colors on. That's the default setting. And we'll just turn it off. And let me show you what the difference looks like. Now the next thing I'm going to show you might explain why some of your pictures may have been out of focus and it's something called priority release for your autofocus modes. So let's go into the menu and I'll show you where they are and explain a little bit about how that works. So let's go back into the custom menu and we actually want to go into menu C for release and you'll see release priority S and that's for your single point autofocus and release priority C which is for your continuous autofocus modes and by default single autofocus or SAF is turned off and continuous autofocus is turned on. So what does that mean exactly? Well if we click the info button it'll tell us if selected on the shutter can be released even when the camera is not in focus. But by default this is turned off. So the camera will not take a picture unless it thinks it's acquired focus. But you'll notice if you use continuous autofocus the default setting is on. So if you're in continuous autofocus and you push the shutter button, it will take the picture whether it has acquired focus or not. All right, so let's do a quick demo. Release priority is set to off. So that means the camera will not take a picture unless it thinks it has focus. So if I quickly push the shutter button, you'll notice that it hunts a little bit, then finds the focus and takes the picture. But if I go up here where there's no contrast, you'll notice it'll hunt and hunt and, and then stop after uh, about one or two seconds because it was not able to acquire focus so it doesn't take the picture. But if I go back here, it very quickly finds the uh, focus because there's good contrast. Now, continuous AF, you remember release priority was set to on. So what that means is the camera will take the picture whether it thinks it has focus or not. So even if I go up here where it's not able to acquire focus, like if I have pressed the shutter button, you can see it's, it's hunting. And if I just take a picture, you'll notice that it's blurry, right? Look at that. It's blurry. Like I took a picture here in continuous autofocus and you notice that it's blurry. So let's go into the menu and turn release priority off. And now let's look. See, it acquired focus before it took the picture, even though we're in CAF, continuous autofocus. So I'll go up here, nothing. Go down here. Whoops, a little motion blur there because my shutter speed's low, but let's try again. I'm going to lose focus up here and then do it again. And then, as you can see, we've acquired focus in continuous autofocus. So if you've been using continuous autofocus and missing a lot of shots, it's because this was probably left to priority on instead of off. So I recommend you turn it off. Now for this last feature, we're going to go back to the spot meter because on our EM5s and our EM1s, we can actually tie the spot meter to the focus point in the frame. The EM10s and some other pen cameras, you can't do that. It's always going to be in the center. But on the higher models, the EM5 Mark IIs and the EM1s, you can actually tie the spot meter to the focus point. All right, going back to my flowers here, you'll see that the histogram, the green area, is still metering in the center. So if I move up to the white area, it's moving all the way to the right. The shadow area is pushing all the way to the left. 
and over here is pretty much a neutral uh, color, or, I'm sorry, brightness. And if I move the focus point around, it doesn't make any difference. If I move the center back to this white area, you'll notice that the histogram gets pushed all the way to the right. And then if I center sort of the shadow area, you'll see that it's moving over to the left. And then of course, over here in the uh, blue area, it goes all the way to the center, give or take. But we can tie the spot meter to the focus point. So let's just go into the menu. And you want to go into the E menu and scroll all the way down until you see spot metering. And I believe on the M1s is uh, menu E3. So we click OK here and we just turn this on right here. And uh, if you want to know what spot highlight and spot shadow is, I do have a video episode number 260 that explains those. So we'll just leave those off for now. Now we have sort of prepped or getting ready to spot meter on the focus point, but you'll notice that it hasn't changed, right? Like if I move this over here, I'm still measuring for the blue area. I'm not measuring on the focus point, which is the flower. So the one more thing we have to do is we have to change our metering to spot metering. And now when I move the focus point up to the white flower, you'll see that it's now metering for the flower and pushing it down to 18% gray or just a normal exposure. And as I move the focus point around down here, it's now metering for those uh, sunflowers and making those roughly 18% gray. And then if I move over here to the blue area, you can see that the exposure changed because I moved the focus point into more of a neutral area. All right, so let me show you one more thing. We still have the spot meter tied to the focus point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna meter for the white flowers up here, like so. And then I'm gonna lock the exposure by pushing the back button here, which is the AEL button. And now I've locked the exposure and now I can focus anywhere else in the, in the screen without worrying the, about the exposure changing, even though we have tied the focus point and the spot metering together. So I'm exposing for the white flowers, but I'm gonna focus say on the sunflowers and I can take a picture here. And I'll do that one more time. Let's say I wanna expose for the sunflowers. Here, I can hit the AL button and now I can move my focus point up to the white flowers and take a picture and we're done. So I hope you found that helpful. I've shown a lot of these tips throughout various videos, but I've never kind of put them together into one. Uh, but these are very common questions that I get, like, you know, what's that green area you mean in the histogram? Or, you know, how do you tie the spot meter to the focus point, et cetera? But uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, you know, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, maybe buy me a coffee. But either way, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.